If you enjoy those actionable quick tips to improve your code, you will like this book. So in this video, I will share with you what this book is about, how is it organized, what you can expect to find inside of this book, but above all, I want to help you to understand if you should buy it or not. So the book is this one right here, The Clean Code Cookbook. And by the name, you can already expect what this book is about. But before that, let's talk about the author. The author is Maximiliano Contieri. I have been following his work for a long time, and I can tell you that it has not only a huge experience in the industry building software, but also he is a university teacher. So you can expect a book that is applicable, but also that is supported in the good practices and in the science of writing code. As the title says, this is a cookbook, and as any other cookbook, you can find a lot of recipes to improve your code in this case. But how do we write a recipe in the case of improving source code? So each recipe of this cookbook will have mainly three parts. The first one is the problem. So it explains a given problem, something that might happen with your source code. As an example, let's say that we are talking about naming in source code. A problem can be having names that are not explicit enough. Then it goes to solution where it proposes an approach to fix that problem. Let's say that is writing meaningful names, something like that. I'm not using a real example. And after that, we have the third step that is discussion. So problem, solution, discussion. And in the discussion is where the book explains why that problem is a problem and what can we apply there to improve the source code, why we are applying that specific solution and how it helps on that case to improve readability, as an example. And the book has 25 chapters. You can see that it is a big book. And each chapter will have multiple recipes. So chapters will be things like naming, comments, nulls, and so on. So you have 25 chapters. And inside of each chapter, you have multiple recipes. So problems that happen related to that concept of the chapter. And all of that you can find in the outline of the book and I will leave a link in the description that you can check exactly that if you want to see exactly which problems we are addressing with this book. And inside of each recipe, you will have not only the problem, the solution and the discussion, often you have codes supporting that. And one interesting thing of this book is that it's not a, a language specific book. So you can find examples written with many languages. And one thing that I noticed is that sometimes problem is hard to translate to the language that we usually use, but in the way that it's written, it's quite easy to understand, even if, if we don't master that language. So inside of the book, you will find samples with things that go from JavaScript to PHP, Python, Java, and even some examples with C Sharp. And by the way, if you want to learn clean code, but with something specific for C Sharp, I have linked in the description my new course on clean code that is available at ThumbTrain. And there are some things that I really enjoyed in this book. One example is that the, the book has some chapters on concepts like security or anemic models, or even metaprogramming. So it's not only those tips that you can find online quite easy, but also in the beginning of the book, Maximiliano talks about a concept that it uses the axiom mapper. That means model, abstract, partial, and programmable explaining reality. I know that those are a lot of words and hard to understand, but the essence is basically that code should model a uh, reality. But we do that with abstract concepts. And even when we are modeling the reality, we can't model everything. Okay? We always have a partial view of what is happening, of the problem that we are solving. But we want to model that, we want to have that in a programmable way, in a way that is easy to understand, that is self-explanatory. And that by reading that source code, we can understand what, what is there, how the model works in the reality. And honestly, this is one of the reasons why this is a good book to read because of this concept. Because during the book, Maximilian will get back to that mapper concept quite often. It will try to relate with that. I know that I didn't give you a proper explanation of what it is, but I wanted to trigger your curiosity on that one. 
The third thing that I really enjoyed in this book is not related to the book itself, but is the fact that you can find a GitHub repo with the source code that you will see across the book. It is free, it is accessible, and I will link that in the description as well. And what about things that I didn't enjoy as much? There's some sections where the concept is being explained and you have that structure of the problem, solution, discussion. And in some cases, I had the feeling that either the sample that I could find there, it's quite small. So kind of like if that scenario that you are facing there is too small to explain the problem. So we can, in fact, relate to the problem. Or even by looking to that sample, I can understand what we are talking about, but that triggers a lot of questions of how to do that in the context of a more complex code base. Because in the way that the book is written, each code sample that you'll find on each section tends to be small. So it's kind of like a code snippet that you can find there. So it needs to contain all the information needed to give you the, the message. And I would like, in some cases, to see more context. So to see the impact outside of that change, to see sometimes a class or, or a project and how that change will impact the source code, how that problem is affecting other areas of your source code. And another small thing that it's not there, maybe in the different edition of this book, could be interesting to have, is in each section when we see a snippet, seeing the language that that code is written on, especially because there are some languages that look kind of like similar, like Java and C Sharp. So having an annotation there to understand which language we are seeing would be interesting. So to me, this book is a um, four star book. So four out of five, but I honestly believe that your experience as a reader will heavily depend on your experience as a developer. If you are new to these concepts of clean code, you it might have a different experience than someone that has been doing it for a long time. And that directly links to two questions. The first one is how to read this book. I think it is an excellent reference book. Reference in the sense that if you are facing a given problem, the way that the book is written, you can quickly go to the index and see if there's something talking about that type of problem. And then you go to the page and you try to understand problem, solution, discussion. Same way that when you use a regular cookbook, you are looking for something with given ingredient. Let's say there's something that you like, you go to that page and you execute that recipe. Same idea. So it's a good book to have in your bookshelf for that reason. However, if you are new into the concept of clean code, and even if you have never read the book of clean code by Robert C. Martin, I think it's worth it to pick this book and read it from front to back because there's a lot of terminology explained in the book. One interesting thing is that every single concept that we usually hear, like um, the broken windows theory or the Boy Scout rule, when the author mentions it, he always have a call out trying to explain what it is and how it applies on that context. So I believe that is a really good book for an introduction to clean code. And also because this book is quite practical. When you are reading it, you will see the problem, the solution, the discussion. You see the code snippet that is there. And you might relate to the things that you have been building in your day to day and you quickly find things to optimize. So that is one of the benefits of this book, in my opinion, because it's quite practical. You can see the real thing there. And the second question would be if you should buy this book or not. So as I'm recording, the price of this book as paperback at Amazon is 65 US dollars. Today, there was a discount in place. So as you can see, it's an expensive book as most software development books are. But to answer the question, if you should buy this book or not, the answer is the following. Where are you in your clean code journey? Are you just starting? So yes, this is a good book for that. Have you just started and you picked up the clean code book by Robert C. Martin 
and now you want to read something else, still yes, it's also a good book for that. There's one thing that I like on the other book and this one doesn't have, that is a chapter with a full rewrite of source code applying all the principles. That is something that you will not find here. But yes, yeah, still then, I think this book is useful. If you already have a lot of experience with clean code, you have read a lot of things, um, the thing that I believe that you'll take from this book, it's maybe that chapter on the mapper concept. But yeah, it's hard to justify to buy a book this size just because of that. But I honestly believe that it is an interesting concept and it might be worthy to Maximiliano to publish some things alone about that concept. So if there's any other book that you would love to see me doing a review like this one, please leave the name of that book in the comments. And now I highly recommend you to take a look into this video right here because that book is a must read.